Welcome back everyone, this is Brian with Faith on Fire. In this video, we're gonna hear from Justin Peters in a brief clip describe what he thinks is absolute proof that cessationism is true. Let's hear what he has to say. If all of the sign gifts were still operative in the church today, there would be no debate about it. Yeah. Yeah. There would be no debate about it. Uh, the very fact that there is a debate as to whether or not these signed gifts continue is inherent proof that they have it. See, what he just basically said there was that the fact that there are people who disagree with me, that's proof in itself that I'm right. That's what Justin Peters just said. There's no logic to that statement. He's saying that there's two sides to this. There's c continuationism and cessationism where he's in the camp of. And the fact that there's debate in the Christian church today about these two things, that's proof that he's right. All right. Why isn't it proof the other side's right? I mean, there's no logic to what he just said, but it gets worse. There's more to this clip. But before I go on and play you the rest, it gets better <laughs> what he says. But uh, let me just explain something that Calvinists and including cessationists love to do. And that is like they like to take uh, certain positions and uh, and they find a way to put labels around something they want to discredit. In this case, we have the gifts of the Holy Spirit. That's what the Bible calls them. You could read 1 Corinthians 12, and you could go through a list of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. They'll be in elsewhere in the New Testament. You can find out all kinds of different gifts of the Holy Spirit. But in particular, in, verse, uh, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, you have certain, certain Holy Spirit gifts that the cessationists don't like, such as the gift of healing, gift of miracles, gift of speaking in tongues, interpretation of tongues, and a word of prophecy or a word of knowledge. And, I mean, Paul distinctively, distinctively goes through uh, uh, speaking in tongues and prophecy in 1 Corinthians 14. And he's not speaking to just apostles. The apostle Paul is speaking to the Christians at Corinth, clearly instructing them how to properly go about speaking in tongues and prophesying in the church in an orderly fashion, but not saying that only the apostles can do that. But there's, but you see, there are times where the cessations, they, they want to just take things out of the Holy Spirit and say, these are the certain Holy Spirit gifts we don't agree with. So we'll just come over here and we'll set them aside and we'll pretend they have their own label. And we'll call them sign gifts or apostolic gifts. Well, first of all, the gifts of the Holy Spirit weren't reserved only for the apostles, number one. And now, you could say, well, maybe they mean the apostolic gifts because they were present during the apostolic era. Well, maybe some believe that, but I've heard some, including Justin Peters, claim that it's just the apostles who had the gifts. And so it's, it's a ridiculous position. Or sign gifts. Now, there are signs and wonders mentioned in the Bible, and there's certainly apostles mentioned in the Bible. And we could even say there's an apostolic era if you want to define it as the time in which the apostles lived. But there really are no specific sign gifts. That's not what the Bible calls them, or apostolic gifts. They're just gifts of the Holy Spirit. And they've got a few that they don't really like, and they want to claim that they've ceased. So that's where this argument comes into play. And right here is the thumbnail. If you did not see this video, you really should go see it. This is where I give people the history of where cessationists came from. By whom? Who came up with it? Why did they come, with, come up with it? When did they come up with it? And why is it still applied today? And it'll be eye-opening for some people to go watch that. Now, back to Justin Peters. Let's, let's go to the next part of his clip. Because there was no debate in the first century, in the early church. There was no debate that the apostles were operating in the signed gifts. Everybody acknowledged that. Even unbelievers acknowledged that. Wow. That is some first-rate biblical ignorance on display, if ever. Now, I've got a couple more clips of Justin Peters coming up, so you'll want to wait for that. A couple short clips still from the same conference he was speaking at on this topic. But before I get there, i got to pause right here and just re remind you of what he just said. That even unbelievers acknowledged the Holy Spirit gifts. No, they didn't. Otherwise, they would become believers. And also, it is patently false if he's ever read the New Testament. I'm sure he is, which makes me wonder what's his agenda here to absolutely preach complete lies. The, the early church did, in fact, debate over the Holy Spirit gifts quite a bit. The fact is that because of the confusion and over the Holy Spirit gifts is the reason why we read about them and are instructed ourselves about them in Scripture today. This, these were letters being written to the early Christians because of the confusion surrounding it. There was other debates 
such as the Gentiles becoming part of the faith? And should they adhere to the same rules as all the Jewish customary rules, circumcision, dietary restrictions, so forth, right? Peter thought one way, Paul thought another way, then Peter had a vision, then agreed with Paul, and it was settled because they trusted in the leading of the Holy Spirit and they believed God. And so this was worked out in this early church time. But to sit there and claim that there was no debate among Christians about the Holy Spirit gifts is patently false. But secondly, these unbelievers, the religious elite of that day not only denied the power of the Holy Spirit and those gifts, they rejected Christ. They wanted to stamp out Christianity. So they made sure that they persecuted those early Christians. They would put them in jail. They would stone them to death. They would hand them over to the Roman Empire so they would be thrown in jail, tortured, or thrown to lions or gladiators or what have you. The early church Christians had a horrible time of persecution against them by unbelievers. To say that these unbelievers, oh, they all acknowledge the Holy Spirit gifts, patently false. And I can only guess that Justin Peters said this for one reason and one reason only. It's because he's got to say something to try to uphold this crazy doctrine of cessationism. And the authority of Scripture and the sufficiency of Scripture gets thrown right out the door in favor of a religious doctrine and theology that he's beholden to and wants to teach as a wolf in sheep's clothing that he is. So I want people to beware of what he said there. Understand the slippery slope of where this goes. The religious elites, they looked at Jesus performing miracles and they denied the power of those miracles right there. They said he does them by the power of Beelzebub, not by the power of God. They denied the power of God. We see that then. We see that today that there are people who have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof from such turn away. That's what the Bible instructs us to do. And those religious Pharisees, they told Jesus, you do this by the power of demons, is basically what they're saying by Beelzebub. And in Matthew 12, verse 31 and 32, Jesus answers them and points out very clearly You can blaspheme me and still be forgiven, but if you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, you won't be forgiven, not in this life nor the next one. And I think those who are sitting under the teaching of these wolves in sheep's clothing preaching Calvinism and cessationism, they better wise up and recognize that it's a slippery slope, especially in the cessationism front. It's one thing to deny these things in confusion or because... In your walk of faith, you haven't seen what's done in the Bible yet in your own life. You haven't experienced the miraculous hand of God. It's one thing to, to fall into, yeah, well, since I haven't experienced that, maybe they don't exist and so forth. It's another thing to, to see other people that have experienced it and then claim that, no, I don't believe them. That was actually, if legitimate, it was actually demonic forces because I don't believe God's doing that anymore. That's blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. It's a serious thing, right? Don't mess around with that. And, you know... I, I could go on about that. I, 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 let's just get into the next Justin Peters clip. He, you know, here it is. So the very fact that, that charismatics have to expend so much energy and effort trying to prove that they do is proof that they don't. Yep. Yes, it's called contending for the faith, something I'd advise Justin Peters to begin doing for the first time rather than promoting false doctrines. Now, I've got one more video clip coming up right now that'll prove that it's actually Justin Peters who does not care about the authority of Scripture nor the sufficiency of Scripture, which will be proven in this video clip. Here it is. Charismatics will say, oh, we'll point to a verse, chapter and verse that says the gifts have ceased. You know? No, there's not a chapter and verse, that, that, you know, not a silver bullet that you can go to that says, yeah, this is when the apostolic gifts ceased. But there's a number of reasons where we have great confidence that they have, there's theological reasons. The sign gifts had a purpose, and that was to um, authenticate apostolic authority. Uh, there's no need for that anymore. So there you have it. Here's a man who claims to who stand on the sufficiency of Scripture, but in fact, there's proof he doesn't. He doesn't care what Scripture says. He admits there's nothing in Scripture that debunks cessationism. It's based on his theology. There's theological reasons. Well, there's lots of theologies. Mormons have a theology. Jehovah's Witnesses have a theology. Buddhism has a theology. There's lots of man-made theologies. That's not an argument for what is scripturally sound. And the fact that he admits that it's not in the Bible should be enough to know that's the proof we need to know that continuationism 
is true and cessationism is not. Because if scripture is our authority and it's sufficient, then we don't need to go beyond the clear statement that he made that no, there's no verse that points to that. There's no silver bullet or whatever he said that you, that you can look to and say, yeah, yeah, the, the, the Holy Spirit gifts have ceased or any particular Holy Spirit gifts have ceased. It's not there. The opposite is there. So let me leave it there. What do you think about this? What do you think about Justin Peterson, cessationist? I, you know, I look forward to your comments and uh, I, there'll be more videos I'll do on the topic of cessationism and continuationism, but I think that'll cover it for today. Thanks for watching and may the peace and love of Jesus Christ be with you now and forever. Amen. Bye-bye.